Hey Pete here for Studio Live today and in this GarageBand for iOS quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can transfer any audio file, that's a WAV, an MP3, an AIF, an M4A from your Windows PC to your iOS device running GarageBand on your iPad or your iPhone using iTunes file sharing. So let's go. Okay, so here I am in my iPad and I've got a guitar chord progression here which is just eight bars that I've recorded. It sounds like this. And what I want to do is I want to add some drums and some other samples to this. Now I could go in and use drums, smart drums, drummer, beat sequencer, Apple loops. There's a whole bunch of options here in GarageBand, but I want to do something a little bit different to show you how we can bring in some external sounds. And first of all, why would you want to bring in external sounds? Well, let's say that you've got a friend who sends you an email with a sound and you want to incorporate that in your song. You might create something in your digital audio workstation on your PC or your Mac and you want to bring that in. There's a bunch of different reasons. What I'm going to show you today is how we can use a very cool website called freesound.org which has a bunch of samples that users have uploaded under usually under Creative Commons license which means that you can actually use these in your projects. Now I won't go into details about copyright and all of the rest of it but be careful and make sure that you're not infringing anyone's copyright but for the most part these are people that just want to share their samples that they've put together that you can now use in your project. So let's jump in now to freesound.org and take a look. And so here we are. I've already Already registered so most of these sites will uh, will ask you to register an account and then log in so I've already done that and I'm gonna go ahead and search for a sound and so I happen to know because I, I recorded it that this is at 86 BPM and I want a loop to go with it and yes you can see here I've already done this search so sorry to show you behind the curtain but I've already done a test run on this one um, and I won't pretend that I don't know which one I'm gonna choose because the one that I thought sounded cool was this old-school bit 86 BPM here now if I want to play back this to hear what it sounds like, I just click the little play button. Sounding good. And then to go into the sample, I click on the link here. And here we go, we can play it again by clicking on this play button. And to download it, we just tap on, tap on, click on the download button. And you can see here that I've done this a few times before. So we don't even have to wait for that. Here's what I prepared earlier. Pretend this is the one we just downloaded. We just click and drag that one over to our desktop. And here we are, we are ready to go. We can now transfer this over using iTunes file sharing to our iOS device. And here we are in iTunes. So I'm here in, I've got my iPad called Airhead here. I'm in the summary tab. What I need to do is come down to the file sharing tab. I've showed this in a few other videos, but if you're new to it, and then if we click on GarageBand here, which I've already done, you can see all of my GarageBand documents. So these are all of the project files, any exported WAV files and other files that I have here on my iPad at the moment in my default GarageBand folder. So all I need to do to bring this across is simply click and drag and drop it in. And in the space of two seconds, it has uploaded and copied that WAV file over to my device. So now let's jump down to the iPad and see what's happening down here. And what you can see is that here is our sample here in our loops. If we tap on this loop icon with the one next to it, the first thing it's going to ask us to do is move audio files. So because it puts it in our default folder, it needs to be in the GarageBand file transfer to folder to show up here in our audio file. So we're going to tap move. If we don't, we can use this browse option down the bottom, but it's easier to move it into here. And there it is. It is there. It's popped up. We're just going to tap and hold drag this into our project, release, and now we have moved in the space of what one minute, two minutes, we've moved that file, we've downloaded it, we've moved it using iTunes, we've got it here in our project, and we're now ready to play back. So let's hit play and hear what this sounds like. And it sounds terrible. So why does it sound terrible? Well, we've got this little lead in part here. So most loops that you download are just going to start on the one beat. This loop happens to have a little bit of a drum fill intro that we need to just edit. So you're going to get a free editing lesson in this video as well. So what we need to do is we need to locate that first one and it happens to be right here on the quarter bar. So that makes it really handy. So all we need to do is tap here, tap again and go split. Now I could just delete that and then line these up, but I actually like the little intro bit. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my guitar and I'm gonna drag this across and line that up with the start of where the loop will start on the one beat. The last thing I'm gonna do here is I'll just 
make that shorter so I can do this, is I'm going to grab everything. So just tap outside, drag a box, and let's just drag all of this so that it starts on the two bar. I just like to have things lined up. I don't like things starting halfway this way. When it hits that one beat, it's going to be right on the number two bar. Now, here's the moment of truth. Let's hit play and see what this sounds like now. I really like that, actually. That's got a bit of a 90s alt-rock uh, Tori Amos kind of vibe to it. So, yeah, children of the 90s, they're, they're nodding profusely. They're, they're like, yeah, man, 90s all the way. Anyway, I think it sounds pretty cool. It's a good start. And what we've done here is in a very short period of time, we've managed to bring in a sound that we don't have access to here in GarageBand, add it to our project. And this is where we can get so much variety. Any source that you can grab an audio file from, you can quickly and easily transfer here into your GarageBand project. And we didn't have to use iCloud or Dropbox or email or sync it up or AirDrop or any of that stuff. All we need to do is plug in our iPad or our iPhone to our PC, use iTunes file sharing, drag and drop, and it's as simple as that. I hope you found this useful and can use this in a future project. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below, and I'll see you on the next video.